Although I'm currently on the southern coast of Turkey, on the Mediterranean Sea, this next video is about northern Spain near the Bay of Biscay. We'll visit the small, family-owned Elcano Winery and learn how to pour a very special wine called Chacoli. Next, we'll walk a small portion of the Camino de Santiago, also known as the Way of St. James. Finally, we'll meet the undisputed grill master in the nearby seaside town of Getaria. Hey there, Ralph Velasco here of the Continental Drifter, where I share simple but powerful tips designed to make your travels easier and your photography even better. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and know that everything I talk about will be linked in the description box below. All right, let's do this. In this first video, I visit with my good friend and local guide, John. He's gonna to explain to me the reason for this very interesting way that Chocoli grapes grow, and then show me how to pour this wine. So let's see how I do. It's a glorious September day, and I'm excited that the prevailing winds have blown me into a lesser visited region in the north of Spain, known as País Basco. This part of the Basque region of Spain was granted the status of nationality by the Spanish Constitution of 1978 and is considered the common and indivisible homeland of all Spaniards. I've always wanted to visit this area more in depth between the Chacoli wineries, the Camino de Santiago, proud and friendly locals, and what is arguably some of the best food in the world, this is bound to be an amazing adventure. I happen to have some great friends in the area that I haven't seen in years, and once my balloon touches down, I'm planning to connect with them. They've promised to take me to their favorite photography spots and to meet some really interesting locals, and I simply can't wait. Right off the bat, my buddy John has arranged for us to visit the family-owned Elcano Winery. They specialize in the regional wine called Chacoli. Chacoli grapes are very unique in that they grow as much as 2 to 3 meters above the ground, when most grapes that I've seen around the world grow at about waist level. Hey John, hey Ryan. thanks for having me here in my this pleasure. amazing vineyard. I've never seen vines like this before. <laughs> Why are they so high? Well, uh, they grow in an area where it's so humid that we have to keep them away from the ground. Ah. Yeah, uh, it's a way to keep them healthy and safe. Uh, it makes harvest much easier, we consider. And How do they get machines in here? Well, actually, there's no way to get machines in ah. here. Yeah, it's I mean, all manual. It's all manual harvest, uh, based in small wineries, family helps, friends can. Many times they're paid with wine, and <laughs> so they all have fun. Growing them this high, it's uh, another way of getting advantage of the limited land that we have to plant. Uh, so they get much more yield doing it this way than doing it in the conventional way. So, so yeah, incredible. Oh, I'm gonna try one of these. Wow. Let's see how many days left for harvest. Can you guess? Can you guess from the flavor? 28? Uh, around 28 to 29 okay, and a half. That's close. <laughs> <laughs> in this area, they have a very unique way of pouring Chacoli, with a glass in one hand and a bottle in the other hand outstretched. It can be a bit messy, and I'm told it's to aerate the wine. But I've got to think it also adds a bit of showmanship to the whole process. All I know is that I'm definitely going to have to give it a go. Well, Ralph, we saw the grapes. Unbelievable. Look at this. Now we have to taste the results. Yeah, yeah. that's the law, right? Yeah. So, here we go with the local Chacoli white wine, which it does have a traditional way of pouring it. It's not, you don't pour like a regular white wine. Really? You just have to break it, oxygenate it, and pour it like up high that way. Nice. Fantastic. There I have to go. try that. You yeah, have to try I, that, I, I, I think I need a bucket, not a glass, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah? Well, do, Give it a chance. All right. I want to see you do this. I have to pour my own. Yeah. I can drink what I put in here? What I get in? <laughs> Depend. Okay. Mm. 
Wow. Not too bad. There we go. Cheers. Salud. Hey, there we go. Oh, that's Cheers. nice. Mm. Really nice. Wow. I think that's the first time I've ever had. Oh, yeah? Chocolate wine. Probably it's not the last. Won't be the last. <laughs> what a delicious and refreshing wine. Now, I'm a big fan of Chocolis for sure. In this next video, I'll walk a small but very important part of the Camino de Santiago. John will also explain to me the different signs that we'll see along the way, and I'll give you a quick photography tip. Have you ever walked the Camino de Santiago? John happened to mention that an interesting section of the famous Camino de Santiago, also known as the Way of St. James, is really close by. I've heard of the famous pilgrimage, but have never actually seen the trail in person. While we're right here, I've definitely got to take in this important piece of history, so I asked John to take me there. We're on the Camino de Santiago, right? Is this the condition of it the whole way? Well, not the whole way. This is how all the old paths were. But lately, in the last years, parts of the Camino, they've been adapted to a much better condition. Some of them are part of the towns, uh, roads are different. But still, you can really feel like the ancient feeling of, of the real Camino when you get into the back roads. And this was a, a Roman road originally? It's a Roman road originally, wow. adopted by the pilgrims as part of the Camino and we can still see vestiges of that time in, under our feet. Incredible. Well, and then we do have this beautiful, it's an amazing forest spot here. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Just go let's ahead, do first. Hmm. Wow, <laughs> look at that. Amazing. Wow. Well, so those are all the vineyards we've been there before. The beautiful fishing town of Guitaria. So we've walked around and I see these symbols almost everywhere. What, are, what do they mean? We always see the yellow arrow, which is the big symbol of the Camino de Santiago. Right. Yeah, it means you are in the way, yeah? And then we do have all these different signage, which refers to different uh, hiking routes that we do have all through the Basque Country. And the Where we are now, apart from being Camino Santiago, it's a common path for many hiking trails. Right. So one of the things I always say is to be sure that you change your batteries and your memory cards on your schedule, not when they go out in the middle of something that's really important. So I'm getting ready to run out of my battery, so I'm gonna change it right now while I have a little lull in the photography. Otherwise, it's gonna happen right in the middle of the spaceship landing and I'm gonna be changing batteries, which is not a good thing. What an amazing experience to see the actual stones laid by the Romans close to 2,000 years ago. This extremely hilly part is actually referred to as Camino del Norte and is much less traveled due to its difficulty. Absolutely incredible. In this next segment, we'll go to the nearby town of Guetaria and meet a man who's been cooking at the same restaurant for over 25 years. Have you ever been to Guetaria? Let me know in the comments below. We're going to meet a man who for the past 25 years has been the undisputed grill master of a restaurant favorited by locals called Kai Kaipe. 25 years this 25 year. years, yeah. wow. Grilling fish. 12 years as a fisherman, 25 grilling it. Amazing. This is my favorite food in the world, so I, you are a master, I can tell. What type of fish do we have? Yeah, right, let's go for you. <laughs> this man's working, so we have to stay yeah, out of the way. Yeah, he goes. So it's turbo, sea bass, sea bream, and turbo again. This is the house circuit sauce. Miracle, miraculous water. Ah, fantastic. It's a house secret sauce. Ah, 
that I'm trying to get the secret from him for the last 15 years, but no way. No way. No way. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to invite Peyo for drinks for many years, and there's no way to know the secret. Yeah, he's, he's gonna let us know how it when it's finished. When it's cracked, it's been it's it's cooked. That's when you know it's done. Wow. Hey, that's done. It's so he has tight. No. Yeah, yeah. It's his experience with these little tricks. That's good to go. Right, right. Yeah. So he has those as asbestos fingers. 25 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Actually, he's going to serve them now. Oh, yeah. trying to get action shots of him pouring the secret sauce, flipping, anything I can do to show motion and action. Having grown up in the industry and having owned several food service establishments of my own, I've worked in some hot restaurant environments, but that was something. I don't know how he does it. I'm often asked what my favorite country is to travel to. And I can never say for sure, but Spain is high on that list. Question of the day, have you ever been to Northern Spain? Let me know in the comments below. Well, thanks for coming out to the Continental Drifter. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on notifications so that you don't miss an episode. Also, visit my website at continentaldrifter.co and be sure to join our Facebook group. So have a look around the channel, find some other videos that you might like. Feel free to share it on with other people that might be interested in this type of information. And remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel.